This is called A Day in the Life of Ignorance. I woke up engulfed in principles that pigeonholed my thinking. Lawlessness, misplaced hate, and complacency. I roll out of bed, but before my feet land on the shabby carpet below, my day is set. And it shall begin like the 1,825 that preceded it. 20 years old, and I arise enthused by the lunacy and depravity that lies before me. For me, it's a way of life, a philosophy worthy of death or imprisonment. I go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, and wash my face. I'm home alone as usual because my divorced mother is off working her tail off, making a living for us. My absentee father in Africa, raised in another family. My staunchly independent sister, off being independent. And my role model brother, serving time, a victim to the backwards thinking that I now praise. You see, their absence made it easy for me to carry out my days as I did. Drugs, guns, and violence with reckless abandon. <laughs> Anyhow, I finish brushing my teeth, start and finish ironing the day's clothes. Take a seat at the kitchen table and, and count out 30 rocks of some low-grade crack cocaine. Ready and bagged up for distribution. But right before I walk out that door, I conceal in my pants an illegal, an ill-gotten 38 special. The last of the, the last of the tools that facilitate my ignorance. I would roam the streets from sunup to sundown, destroying lives with my mentality. And of course, these poisonous rocks. Drinking all the day long, trying to deaden the fears of the penitentiary or death. While simultaneously battling other boys for territorial supremacy. Laying claim to area we didn't even own. All for the glory of color-coded concepts, crips, and bloods. What I've described as a subcultural prison, an outlook that plagues the minds of boys and girls, men and women nationwide, a construct constructed by the rudimentary reasonings of immature men, men given to half-truths and half-baked ideas of grandeur, intimated by old gangster flicks. I officially adopted this, this, this perspective five years earlier. This was around 1988, a 15-year-old devoid of positive role models and intellectual stimulation. A boy conditioned by his nation to think less of himself, to despise his hue. Indirectly, I was taught that because of my dark skin, I wasn't worthy of the simple considerations offered the fair-skinned peoples of the world. That elevated status and achievement were beyond my grasp. The bulk of this brainwashing was perpetuated by the media through their portrayal of African-Americans as negative, poverty-stricken, and criminal. To this onslaught of digital information, there was no counter-argument, no consistent visage of black beauty and strength, only images of servitude clothed in entertainment. I rejected this view, rebelled against it. I refused to be looked down upon, to placate or pander for a servile position in this white man's world. For me, fast money was more attractive. Now, along with the gang culture that subjected my mind to insanity, there was a nationalistic furor that fueled my psychosis. 
Being a direct descendant of Africa, father born and raised, I was especially sympathetic to her identity and her ills. I found myself defending her on all fronts, from the derogatory statement made by foreigners, non-black people, to the shameful and ignorant mouthings of her own offspring, my brothers and sisters. Now you couple these conditioned states, gangs and nationality, with a radically charged teaching of Islam, and you have yourself the perfect prison, psychological in nature. I admit, I was duped into thinking that I was fighting the, right, the good fight that standing against all that was white was right. In my ignorance, there was an abundance of pain and anger, blame and self-pity, weapons I used to wage war against the system of white might. The pain was made manifest through drugs, which I sell to anyone resembling the system CEOs. Anger had become a Smith & Wesson 38, which I used to take back Africa's dignity and nobility. But in reality, my pain never left the inner city streets of Long Beach. Misled and uneducated is how I had risen every morning for 26 years. Some say ignorance is bliss. But through contemplative reflection, Honesty and courage, I overcame delusion, finding truth within me, which gave me insight into you. 45 now, and I arise educated and conscious. Black, beautiful, and liberated, unencumbered by the weight of hate, and unbound by the shackles of pseudo-tribalisms. My mind is clear and my spirit is free. And I give my love to all brothers and sisters to whom I call family. Today, there's joy in my risings for my purpose is service. My battle fatigues are blue jumpsuits scribbled with yellow scribblings of CDC. My weapons, kindness and consideration. Platform, Facility A, Donovan Corrections. There's been a paradigm shift prompted by necessity. Either I stay the course and die in darkness, or unlearn, relearn, and become the light. In the words of Prophet Joshua, as for me and my household, we shall serve the light. Thank you.